Welcome to Shampoo and Booze, a podcast about Airbnb and short-term rentals at shampooandbooze.com. We are Ryan and Ashley, sisters who run Airbnbs and want to help you run yours. Every week, we cover topics about the design and operation of short-term rentals. Send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com, and we'll do our best to cover topics you care about. We are also available to give design and listing advice for your Airbnb or short-term rental. Check out our services page at notperf.com to book a time with us. Okay, this is episode number 65. We are talking about Airbnb or your short-term rental listing pictures and titles. Now that sounds pretty basic, but it really isn't. And you have very recent experience with this because you just made live your third rental. Yes. So this week, Jay and I, we took photos, we made a little draft listing, and then we sat there for a few days and we were like, okay, (laughs) now we have to order all our photos, edit them, make sure they're not too many photos, make sure we have photos of everything, and write the listing. Um, It's helpful when you have another listing to kind of copy and paste, but then you kind of tweak things for that that listing. So that that helps. But honestly, when we first started, I think I copy and pasted from a listing that we thought was written well. I was just going to suggest that. So I was wondering like how much did you either look at places in your area or places you've been to just to get ideas for like, what are you missing? Like how, like, for example, like, how did you think about your title? Yeah, so the title is interesting, because Airbnb only gives you 50 characters. So like, I sell on eBay, and it used to only be 50 characters. So you just like squeeze as much pertinent information into that title. So it used to be 50 characters. Now it's 80. And that like, ah, it was so nice when they gave us 80. But Airbnb, they give you 50 characters. So you really have to put as much information because that's what people are reading, right? I mean, you have to put the like colorful, interesting words that are good keywords, basically, that are going to grab people like I've read titles that you're just like river cabin number five. <laughs> you know? You're know, you just like, no. Or I saw when so I recently relisted my apartment just for a hot minute and then took it down again, just for, because I'm th- doing things so short term right now. But I was looking around my area. And there are people who have like kind of flowery language too. It'll be like beautiful, you know, treetop, like gorgeous town. And I'm like, that tells me nothing. Like, uh, you're like, where's gorgeous town? Yeah, exactly. Like, and so I decided to put like entire apartment parking and six minutes to the train was my title. Very practical. But in the city, you're like, yes, that's what I want to know. I'm like, parking, you can walk to the train, and it's the entire apartment. I'm like, that's what people are looking for. And honestly, not everyone is savvy enough to figure out it's the entire apartment. And so many people who have private rooms make it sound like a private something or other. And I honestly think that's just confusing to people. We just were actually looking for a place to rent up by you in Western Mass. We just had the hardest time with people's titles because we picked, uh, what what do we pick? Private, private, entire place, right? There's like shared space, private, entire place, whatever. And yet people's titles and photos would kind of be like behind their house and you could tell and you're like... I can't tell if this is an entire thing or like a carriage guest house. And if it is a carriage in a guest house, that needs to be, honestly, it needs to be in the title because. Just say what it is. Right. Exactly. Because I don't just mind say a what guest it is. house. Like I'll rent a guest house. I just want to know what I'm looking at. Mm-hmm. So for our title, it's 50 characters. So I actually went on, you can just Google a website. It's like character count website where you start I started typing in there because I'm like I can't go over 50 it won't let you so I just started typing like modern (laughs) Jay didn't like my title I was like 
modern historic chic downtown apartment, you know, like three bedroom apartment, whatever. And he, he tweaked it a little bit. I have to actually look to see what my title is now. So what we got to is we wanted people to know they were downtown. We wanted to know people to know it was a historic, but modern, meaning we've renovated. It's not just exactly. like... exactly. It's not like you're in an old building in an old apartment, you know, like, no. Historic and janky. Yeah, yeah. historic and horrible. Um, so this is our title right now. It's exactly 50 characters. Historic, downtown, modern, APT, meaning apartment, on Two Mile Creek Trail. Because our friend is actually currently staying there, and she has a very active dog, and they love the trail. There's this walking trail through town. It's like an exercise trail, but it has all these gorgeous gardens. You walk through the creek and, like, under these bridges, and there's, like, gray herons, like, diving and fishing. It's just – and there's ducks everywhere. And she goes there twice a day. Sometimes she walks the dog three times a day there. So we were like, creek trail. Like, people need to know it's right outside the door. And I know we said this on our last episode, but that is such an upside of having a friend stay your Airbnb yes. before it's listed. Because you wouldn't have necessarily thought to say that unless she had stayed there, would you? I I knew that that was a selling point because we don't have any outdoor space. So we knew we had to push that, but I didn't, I don't think I knew I had to put it in the title. Or if I had put it in the title, I would have called it the Greenway. And people from out of town don't know what the Greenway is. So like Jay was brilliant saying two mile creek trail. You get your exercise minutes in. I just got an Apple watch. So I'm like, I got to close my circles Um, You get your exercise minutes in. The kids want to take a walk. The kids want to take their little bikes over there. Or you want to walk the dog. And it's perfect. There's literally a cow field in the middle of it. You do a loop around a cow field and there's like baby cows. So you're like, this is a huge selling point, you know? Right. And not many people would know that that's necessarily right in downtown, which is also where the apartment is. It's It's not like two mile loop you know, mile out of town. It's like right there. It's right there. You get, you walk out the building and it's right out the door. So basically for titles, number one, 50 characters. Number two, put your selling points in there. Like I, and be very clear. Like if you're close to downtown, totally smart. You know, if you're in the middle of the city, just like Ashley said, parking in the city now, you know, you can, you could even say like in your listing, I don't know if you say how, how close the train is to your house. You probably say that. I do. I said it in my title, six minutes to train. Cause I didn't need a giant title. I didn't need something that was like, blah, 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 blah. I just was like, what's the most important thing here? You know? Yeah. So those are the things to think about, um, with your title. And it's nice to be able to bounce your title off other people. You know, I sent it to you and mom and then like Jay and I went back and forth on it. So it was kind of like, you got to get that, you got to get that down in 50 characters and make it, make it catchy. And if for those of you who don't have a lot of experience actually renting Airbnbs yourself, just get on Airbnb or or wherever you're listing, it's VRBO, which I don't have a lot of experience with, but you do, Ryan. Yeah. Um, And pretend like you're going to a town and just be like, I don't know anything about this town or I've been here before. What what would I be looking for? You know, and just see what other people are listing and what their titles are, because it really informs how you might use language. Right. And so it's funny that we were looking for Airbnbs the same week we were writing our listing. Um, And we were looking at a place where it's, it's not urban, but it is a city. And, you know, we were like, how close are we to downtown? Like, can we walk over to Ashley's apartment? You know, like, also, when you're looking on Airbnb as comparison, see who the highest rated ones are. Like, why are they highest rated? Why are they getting all the bookings? Like, look at the people who have the really high, you know, calendars, like their calendars are booked. They're doing something right. So you're 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 competing with them, but also you can go around the map on Airbnb and look everywhere and just see what are the what are the listings that are grabbing you? Because so to go to our next topic, the thing that Airbnb shows you on the desktop, because I'm mostly looking on the desktop, not on the phone, 
you have your title, and you have five pictures that pop up on the listing. Now you have your very first picture. There's one picture they show you on the, the search list. It's the title and the price, obviously, and that one, like they call it the cover photo. So there's so much pressure to pick that photo, right? And then when you click through, it shows five photos. So it gives you a big cover photo and then it's like four little photos. It's almost like a little photo gallery. Now we were struggling with this because we have, like we talk, I think we've talked about this before in the podcast. We have everything in an order. You start in the living room, you go to the dining room, you move to the kitchen, and then you go to the bedrooms, and then you go to the bathroom, or the bathroom's kind of in between the bedrooms. It's so, And then we have our outdoor pictures. But it's tough because you want that gallery photos to show the best, the nicest, like cutest bedroom, the kitchen. I wanted to show the bathroom, but it didn't look right. And then we showed the outside of our building because we recently renovated this like gorgeous historic brick building with like this beautiful storefront. And I wanted to show people you're on the top floor of a storefront. I want to make that very clear. You're not in like a private apartment in a quiet neighborhood. Like you're on Main Street. It was really tough because when you click through, actually, I would love this to be what Airbnb does in the future where you click through And now you're looking at the first five photos out of order. Like they're in the order you put in the gallery. And then you're like, oh, I saw a picture of that bedroom before. And now I'm down here and there's the rest of the bedroom. (laughs) Like, it's a little weird, but the pressure's kind of on with your first five photos. Yeah, I do. I I mean, I know we've talked about the order of photos before. And basically, like, I feel like it's frustrating that you have to choose those five. And they do feel a little bit like rando out of order. But... I I think that you made the right choices. I looked through how you did it, and I I thought those were the right ones. Yeah, we really, like, kind of agonized over those. Like, me probably more than Jay. He was like, no, just put it in this order. It's fine. (laughs) But, like, so the other thing, too, we were actually comparing ourselves to someone else who has a and b like a proper B&B. She's on Airbnb, but she makes breakfast for people, and she hosts, like, a suite in her house, in, like, a historical house, right down the street. So she's on Main Street. We were comparing ourselves to her listing, actually, because I wanted to see, like, how many bookings does she have? Like, she's on Main Street. She had 100 photos. Did I tell you that? You did. That's just, <laughs> like, bananas. Photos. And you're like, okay, honey, you don't need 100 photos. That's too many. That's way too many. So do you have a sense of like, what's the max number? Or like, how do you think about how many photos to post? Because I I feel like mostly people over post photos, or they have like five photos. Right. So (laughs) it's never like in between. It's never just right. Um, For me, what my rule of thumb when I was taking photos was, I basically wanted two photos of every room. The bedrooms are really small. And so I wanted to show the bed with like the side tables and the lights and like the plugs. And then I wanted to show like where you put your luggage and where there's like an extra chair and like where all our hooks are. Like we have hooks, we have hooks everywhere. Every single room has a bunch of hooks and the hallways have hooks. But uh, our living room is actually huge. It's almost the size of two rooms. So I took four pictures in there because there's kind of like four perspectives of like how you want to see it. So that's an exception. You have a really big room. You're like, okay, I want to kind of like show all the little sitting areas. But honestly, two pictures per room. The dining room has all these cool perspectives. And I was like, no, two pictures. Like, I don't need a picture of the recycling bin. Like, that's not that's not helpful. Um, the kitchen also two two perspectives. I'm sure I could take like three. Nope. Two pictures. Cause you want people to get the sense of your style and how cozy and how cool. And then like, that's enough. But like you said, uh, you don't need more and you don't need less. Like when we were looking in, in your area, some people had these really dark photos and like, they wouldn't show the bathroom And they would be like, oh, we have three beds. And you're like, yeah, I only see a picture of one bed. So where are the other ones? I feel like that's a classic one that people leave out. They are like, they like show a feature bedroom and then they're like, well, there are two more bedrooms. Like, what are you going to, why do you (laughs) need to see those? It's just a bed in there. (laughs) 
Right. And so I feel like classically people leave out extra bedrooms, but I'm like, if you're planning something for a family trip or a trip with your partner or a trip with a friend, like you kind of want to know what the options are for the beds. Right. And Airbnb is great about listing the beds and the sizes. Like they kind of ask you, okay, is this a bunk bed? Is this a queen bed? Is this a king bed? What kind of bed is in this room? But it's great to see a photo because I'm about to go on basically a work trip at this house that has three three or four bedrooms and I'm like yeah I want to see which bed I'm picking like I kind of need a bigger bed because there's two of us and the rest of our work colleagues it's just one of them so we get the king bed damn it (laughs) but you know so you're kind of like already able to plan it out ahead of time you know and you want to show how comfy and cozy your bedrooms are you know yeah like you want you you want to feature things, but you don't want to, like, be people over the head with it. Right. It's like, they don't care that much. They just want to see it. Yeah. And, I mean, the other thing I actually had trouble with was um, photos of the bathroom. So, like, when I, the bathroom's small, but it's got everything. It's got a full tub. It's got a sink. It's got a toilet, obviously. It's got storage. It's got, actually, like, extra storage that we built in. But it's really hard to take pictures of a bathroom. So Airbnb really likes landscape photos. So they're horizontal. You know, if, you, if you're taking a picture with your phone, you're turning it the way you don't talk on the phone. But man, taking pictures of a bathroom or a really narrow room, I had to take a vertical photo. Like I had to turn the camera and take a, they call it a portrait photo of the bathroom. And that's why I couldn't use it in my gallery photo because it like crops it all weird. I was like, I just have to do this. So it's tough. But I, t- I actually took three pictures of the bathroom because I took a picture of the, the, ba- the toilet and the sink. So you see kind of that area. And then I pivoted to show the shower. Like it's a full bath. It's brand new. It's got a gorgeous like shower head. And then I showed the storage. So that's another exception. I don't need 10 photos of the bathroom, but I do need to show like what I'm giving people in there. Also, I have to say your spaces are gorgeous and I think you should highlight them. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, honestly, look, if you spent a lot of money on the bathroom like we did, um, you're like, I kind of want to show off a little bit. But with the bedrooms, you're like, they're, I mean, they have artwork and they have like gorgeous curtains and nice rugs and like everything's cozy. But it's the bed and it's the chair and it's done, you know? Right. Well, I mean, like in one of your spaces, the bedroom has more of like a seating area and, you know, and you're, you're going to show those things off, but I feel like for the size bedrooms of your new Airbnb, like there's, it's not as crucial to see every angle of the bedroom. And then the other thing that kind of is a little bit agonizing, but um, Jay was really good about this. Uh, He, captioned every photo which you should I think do. that's so key I do that too just to explain what what is the person looking at like I think you numbered your bedrooms or something I think that's really smart Jay did that because I was and I'll talk about this in a second but I drew a layout of the apartment because you can't tell the layout with photos you're like what's this bed is this bedroom upstairs what you know what's where When we did our video review of Jordan's place, we couldn't tell where the dining room was in relation to the kitchen. I'm pretty sure they were next to each other, but you didn't know. You're like, are they next to each other? Because that'd be good to know. So we actually ordered our bedrooms, bedroom one, two, and three, so that on the caption, we could say bedroom one. This is also, this is like the second photo of bedroom one. And then on the layout little map of the apartment, you're like, oh, that's bedroom one. It's the front bedroom, like closest to the living room. Yeah. I mean, I feel like for people like us who like don't really want any surprises, yeah. having a little draw out of the layout with the caption photos, I think that's clutch. Yeah, because when we were looking at like carriage houses up in Western Mass, there was this one listing that we thought was really cute. And we kept reading his listing and he's like, His first photo is this cute, like, cottage carriage house in their backyard. But in his description, he kept saying, it's the lower apartment. And we were like, what? Like, what am I looking at? And he's like, oh, he said, the carriage house has an extra bed 
if you want it in there, but it's not actually part of the downstairs apartment. <laughs> what? It's your first photo. Like, he should have, number one, been clear uh, and not shown the carriage house. Like, it was so weird. And then it would be great to have a drawing where you're like, this is the apartment. And then this is the second bedroom that you could use if you need a second bedroom. It's in another building. <laughs> it was like, Ugh. yeah, I mean, in that, I think that's a classic move of I'm going to f- just find the cutest picture of my property. And hopefully that will draw clicks. But the problem is, is it's kind of deceitful because you're like, oh, we're going to stay in this cute carriage house but really it has nothing to do it has nothing to do with the actual listing so for those of you who are listening don't just pick the cutest photo because it can be deceiving honestly he should have had that photo last and whatever like and we actually explained it yeah yeah and we we didn't end up renting that place because we're like we're so confused about where we're staying yeah um that doesn't make any sense But so actually what I noticed when we were writing this listing too is that Airbnb allows you to associate photos with a particular room. I I don't know what that looks like for a renter because I don't really see that on the like front end of the website right now. And I don't know if they're just doing that for future. When we were writing the listing, there was like another menu where you could go in and be like, These are the photos of our first bedroom. These are the photos of the other bedrooms. This is the, these are photos of the kitchen. This is the dining room. This is the living room. This is the backyard. So there are other listing services like VRBO does that. Um, And you can actually, they pre-caption your photos. Like it's really generic. They're like living room, bedroom one, bedroom two. Because people who aren't captioning their photos Maybe that's what Airbnb does. If you don't write a caption yourself, they will caption it bedroom one. They living don't. room. No, they, they don't. Yeah. It's just blank. And I, I've seen so many listings where I'm like, what am I looking at? You know, it's like, it's, there's no caption. Like, I don't know what this is. Is this a swimming pool in your yard? Is this a lake on your property? Is this a hot tub in the neighbor's yard. Like (laughs) (laughs) they're like, check out my neighbor's hot tub. You can jump in. They're like, just don't tell them. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, honestly, what it comes down to is be as clear as possible. Like do not leave anything for people to write you and be like, is this a thing? I don't understand. No, I've had people do that. Even though I have a drawing of like every single room and like the outside of our house. And yes, there's a bedroom and a little cabin. We do have that on one of our properties, but then you're like, here's a picture that shows how far away it is. It's very close. You know, it literally is a patio and then there it is. So the other thing too, that we like to tell people is not to take pictures of random details or like sunsets. Like, no, no, it's good to tell people about those things, but like putting those photos in your listings, I just think it's tacky. Like, I just don't think it's necessary um, to sell your spot. I mean, maybe sometimes, but like, I, you know, I saw a listing in our area that is an apartment designed by someone who's like a kind of prominent furniture maker here and gorgeous apartment. Like, it's just like so beautifully done. But there were a lot of pictures of, like, little vignettes, you know? So it would be like, oh, this little arrangement we made on the credenza. Or here's the table with, like, this cool grouping of objects. And I just felt like... It wasn't necessary. It's not like a magazine, you know, it's like, and it wasn't giving me more information. I wasn't like, oh, that's where the dining room is. I was like, because they were all zoomed in pictures, you know, so it felt a little bit too precious or like too like check out this little vignette, you know, it just if it's not giving people more information, like a sunset is not, you know, I mean, if it's like that's the view from the deck and that's the information that you're giving, great. You know, I feel like landscape pictures can be helpful, but not like three sunset pictures. No. I mean, it's like you said, those details, like the little arrangement on the credenza, or we have a couple little like sculptures on the top shelf of like the bar area. People can see that in the photo. Like, if that's there, they can see it. And honestly, like, those little 
photos are not going to sell them on the on the listing. Like you want them to just see this. They want to see the space. They want to see the bedrooms, the bathroom. They want to know what's included and where it is in your town in relation to the vineyard they're visiting or the wedding they're going to or whatever. So that's what I was going to say next. Uh, something that we do and we put it right in our listing. I also like print it out and put it on the wall. We just like take a screenshot of a map of our area and I put like I go into Photoshop. You could also hand draw this and like take a photo of it. If you're like, I don't know, Photoshop, just print out a map and like, you know, do little stars where you like, you know, I put the vineyard that people come here to go to. I put the brewery. Those are the only things that are here. No, but like the caverns, the caverns. So the caverns are really famous. The national park. I put how far it is from the apartment or the house or whatever. I put the two prominent wedding venues that everybody comes to. Like it's this many miles, like this farm where you're probably going to get married is three miles drive. So they're not like, is it 30 miles away? And you're just like, it's all right here. That's a good point to make, actually, um, that people can't look your address up until they book with yes. you. And so right. it's I've found it very hard as a guest sometimes to estimate how far something is or... You know, it's like, I'll look at the map and try and figure out to like sort of pinpoint to. So just like what you're saying, it's so helpful for people to know how far things are. And I love the map that you put together for this new rental. It's so cute. And it's also so helpful. Like I learned something. I was like, oh, because you I think you said in the caption, like centrally located from all of the you know, kind of key areas that you would go to. And looking at your map, you literally are in, in the middle of all of those key features. So I was really psyched on that map. Yeah. And like, what's great is when you're super close to something, like we're one block away from the wine bar and the brewery. I just said it's a thousand feet away. Uh, I think it might even be less than that. It's like 900 feet. So I even put that on the map so people know. I mean, kind of like I almost want you to like put, well, I don't know. The city's a little bit different, but, you know, you could put a little like star where you live and, and you're like, here's the train. Like it's that close. I think that if I were to take that next step for my Airbnb, I would for sure draw a map because I've noticed looking at other Airbnbs in Boston, no one does that. And I put my listing up with the new title, which was like, you know, entire apartment, six minutes parking kind of thing, six minutes to the T. Um, I was booked within, I was booked for both dates that I put up within 24 hours. And I think it's because my listing was just super clear and I have a good location. So it was just like instant. But you have a good location and people knew that instantly. They're like, this is a great location. Get it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So uh, another tip real quick, one of the last things we're going to say is if you're in an urban area or like we're not in an urban area, but we are downtown, so parking is limited. I made a very specific parking map because I recently went down to Lynchburg, Virginia, and it's not super urban, but they do have like a pretty big downtown. And like we had to meet our host because she had to tell us like where we were allowed to park and like where we wouldn't get you know, towed and whatever. And I'm like, she could have just given us a map. Like she could have just been like, when you get here, park in one of these places and you're good to go for the weekend. So I, it was kind of a pain, but I, you know, took a set, literally a satellite screenshot of the downtown because you can see the, the public parking, like you can see the parking lots. And I just put like little, you know, the universal symbol for parking is like a blue P and I just put little blue P's everywhere to be like, this is public, this is public, street parking is public and free, don't park on the bridge, you're not allowed to park there because we're like right on the bridge. Just so when people arrive on a Friday night, they're like, oh, they said we could park right here, so let's just park, you know, there's no parking enforcement, there's no meters, like just park there. We had a similar situation. We stayed up at a place in Burlington, which was the cutest little cutester. 
ever. I want to show you the listing because we were just like died a hundred deaths. It was so cute. Um, but the parking situation was kind of confusing and it sort of like made our arrival kind of confusing, you know, it was like, we were like, oh, we can't park here. So we like parked way down the street. And then when we got to the house, we were like, oh, actually, we could have parked here. And it was like 95 degrees. And we were like, kind of like, Ugh. and we had bikes with us, you know, and so it was just like, one of those things where whether we misread it, or they didn't communicate it properly, like it was probably a combination of the two. And it's just such an example of like, just assume it's confusing and try and make it is like, I love your parking map. I, I looked at it and I thought it was so helpful. You know, it's like, or just orient people because they won't get the address until they book. And if they are trying to plan a trip, it's really nice to just have a map. Yeah, I really wanted it to be visual because I need that. Like when we went to Lynchburg, I like did like a satellite view just to be like, where's their building, you know? And like, it looks like there's a parking lot next door, but I don't know if we're allowed to park there. And, you know, we're getting in on Friday and then we're like going out to dinner. So I want to like, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like people are coming in to go to wedding rehearsals. Like they're coming in to get married. Like they don't have extra. They have three kids and a dog with them. You're like just as much information and as clear as you can be. It eases people's anxiety. It eases my anxiety when I'm traveling to have like, I've traveled all around the world. And like one of the places we stayed, um, which was actually great. Uh, we drove around Ireland and we stayed in Airbnbs, but some of them like are so rural, they don't have an address. So people were kind of like, well, you kind of get into town and you turn down the lane. And the I'm like, just give me your coordinates, like give me your GPS coordinates. Like I'll put it into Google Maps and I'll get it. You know, like it's things like that where I'm like, I'm in a foreign country. I'm driving down these tiny, tiny rural roads on the wrong side of the road. Like, <laughs> I think I have a cell signal and I hope that I do, but I'm in Ireland. Well, that's the thing, right? Is sometimes people show up. I've had people show up international who don't have SIM cards. So, you know, they get off a plane and they're just like, ah, I don't know how to get to you. You know, um, my favorite was uh, we were staying in Japan in Tokyo our first place that we landed and they made a YouTube video walking from the train to the Airbnb because they actually couldn't explain it with a map because there was like a bridge you walked over and there was like certain places where you could get into it and places you couldn't. And Honestly, I watched the YouTube video like on the train on the way there, and I don't know if we would have found the apartment without it. That's a perfect example, like Tokyo. They're like, yeah, we can't really explain where it is. Well, and everything is in Japanese, all the addresses. And so I was like, ooh, this is going to be really confusing. And the YouTube video saved our butts, especially because we were like jet lag and confused and, you know, <laughs> didn't speak the language. But it was really, it was super clutch. Right. Yeah. Like we have people today coming from England and we just had to be super clear. Like we've had people come in at midnight from the UK with three little kids Mm. And they're trying to call us to ask us a question. And it's like the phone isn't connecting. And like as much info as you can give people before just helps so much with traveling. Thanks for listening to Shampoo and Booze at shampooandbooze.com. As usual, you can send us your questions with an audio file or written to shampooandbooze at gmail.com. And we'll do our best to cover the topics that you care about. Don't forget about our design and listing advice services. Head over to our services page at notperf.com to book your design advice session. Bye. Bye.